I want to have Remarkable Cuisine as one of the highest in catering operations you know, in the region. You know, I have various gigs and clients that keep my job interesting and keep it moving. And that's the dynamic part of it that keeps me into it. I get to cook different things. I get to sort of go by my style. And it is kind of awesome the way I do it. I put a dynamic on it that makes it mine. The future is incredibly bright. More restaurants, more stores. It's going to happen. Hello, my name is Chef Mark McLean. I'm here to demonstrate a couple of quick and easy cooking techniques so you can prepare a restaurant style dish at home. Um, we have some great things here. We have uh, vegetables, we have fish, we have this really couscous. We're gonna bring all this together to make a dish, a pan seared salmon um, that's topped with the caper oil with uh, fresh herbs and scallion and uh, really great capers and caper oil. We're going to uh, have a zucchini and squash mixed with sweet potatoes or a vegetable. And we're going to make it all together with a really crucial salad, red pepper, um, a little bit of fresh corn, um, a white wine sauce that makes everything come together. And we're gonna plate that so it's like you're eating at a restaurant at home with instruction by me. We're gonna get started cutting a little sweet potato in a little dice. We're gonna cut it nice and small so it cooks fast and get it in the pan. You're gonna hear a great sizzle as that gets going. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to cube out a small part of the sweet potato so that the pieces are uniform and that they all cook together. Kind of just moving easy and quickly to add a little bit of great starch to our veg, but at the same time, flavor, size, consistency are things that matter in a dish, especially if you are in a restaurant and you see how great things are like that. While I'm at this, I'm also going to make sure that we can get a great crust on our salmon. I said this is pan seared, which means that it has a great crust when you take a fork and cut into it, meaning that the whole and all those oils kind of just fall apart. So I'm going to turn my pan up right now. I'm going to heat my pan up for about, say, four to five minutes on a, on a high heat. So it's always such a smoking. And when I lay it in there, it's going to automatically crust up. I'm also going to get my uh, my sweet potato to cooking because it's a little starchy of course it's um, going to take a little longer to break down and then I'm going to finish that when I have my zucchini and my squash and a little bit of pepper and things like that. I'm working with two simple oils today a vegetable oil and olive oil. I'm going to use the olive oil more because it's healthier it's better for you and I'm working with a vegetable oil which is a little higher heat so it can take the heat that I'm going to put on the salmon. <clears throat> Now you guys have to understand, everything cooks in a medium and it cooks a certain way. We put fat in the pan because we provide a fat for things that don't have any fat. For example, potatoes, zero fat, zero calories, until you actually introduce that to them. We're fighting it in the pan with olive oil so we can actually provide a certain fat for this. And I'm going to get that cooking a little bit, get a little bit of char on there. So when we get our veg going, it's the same thing. Now, for our salmon, we have a wild coho salmon here, a really good cut. I basically portioned the filet into about four ounce, about five ounce portions, a really good meal. I left the skin on because it's a great flavorful part. I'm going to season this really fine sea salt and pepper. Really simple. The idea is to season the fish like snow. Everything is coming down evenly. We're putting a nice even seasoning on the fish. Understand also that the salt is going to work to dry the fish out. You can't sear something that's wet because then when the, uh, when the moistness hits the pan, you create steam. The salt is going to dry out, of course, the fish when it hits it and it's going to make it so we can see that nicely put a nice crust on the fish and then when we finish the fish in the oven at about hmm, 365 degrees all the oils of the fish will distribute and that's the good parts that you're tasting so i season one side i season the non-skin side because that's the part we're searing after we put this in the pan it is going to sear and we're going to season the other side and we're actually going to put it in a in a pan on um, parchment paper so they're 
we can finish in the oven to our temperature. A lot of people don't know this, but you can finish a salmon just like a steak. You can do it medium rare, you can do it medium well, you can do it medium, you can do it well done. Me, I prefer my salmon medium rare, but I'm gonna cook this to about a medium so the fats distribute and you'll see that when we cut into it later after we plate the dish up, okay? So I have my sweet potato cooking here. There's a light little sear on there, all right? I have my pan getting hot. I can taste the temperature there. I'll put my hand over it a little more and it's gonna be hot enough for us to start searing our salmon. At the same time, I can start to cut some zucchini and squash. That's gonna be our veg also. We're gonna add this to the pan after we cut our, after we have our sweet potato going for a little while and searing a little bit. Notice I'm cutting things the same size as I did the sweet potato because when you have this on your plate, the way it hits that at a restaurant, you want everything to be the same way, uniform, and looks good. So when you get a fork full, it's sort of this beautiful palette of the sweet potato colors and the zucchini and the squash and things like that. I'm going to add a nice layer of oil to coat the bottom of our pan. I'm going to pull this off heat a second as I go over here. And as I put this in here, you're going to hear the greatest sizzle ever. That sizzle means one thing. We're cooking and we got it going well. I'm going to season the skin a little bit. Salt and pepper. Same one I used for the other side. I'm going to let that sear. It's probably going to take about three minutes on that side to get a nice crust golden brown. Now our sweet potato is caramelized a little bit, meaning the sugars have actually cooked on it. So what I'm going to do is remove this from the pan and I'm going to start to brown our peppers that we're going to put in our Israeli couscous salad. So I put this in here. And I move our zucchini to the side. I grab a red pepper. I'm going to cut this in a small dice. This is going to be the basis for the Israeli couscous salad. Remember, we're going to cook this with garlic. We're going to finish it with lemon. We're going to make our almost like a vinaigrette within the same pan sauce. Everything here is paired so the flavors match together. Everything matches together well. We're going to have an awesome meal here. Cutting the pith of the pepper out. And a nice dice. Everything the same, even size. Come over to the stove with me for a second. Let's check this here in our salmon. Now lift that up. I see a golden brown color. That, my friends, is what we're looking for. I have a small pan here, top of parchment. It means I can put it right in the oven to finish. I'm gonna take our salmon out, touch the side that isn't hot, and flip it right there. All we did is we used a really hot pan, a really dry piece of fish, and we seared the protein. It got a nice crust on there. We're going to put that in the oven to finish soon. Now, still have some oil in my pan. I'm going to take my pepper and put it in there. I'm going to add a touch more olive oil for a little great fat. And then I'm going to chop up a piece of garlic. Now, usually you could put the garlic in before you start cooking the pepper. But you want the pepper to break down a little bit. You don't want the garlic to burn. Garlic is awesome. Burnt garlic is terrible. When I add that garlic after, you're going to hear that smell. 
hit the pan. It's going to smell great. I cut some corn off the cob. I'm going to add that to our pan to saute with our pepper. Now remember, this is all for the Israeli couscous salad, which has this garlic and this pepper and this corn. We're going to finish it with some lemon, some wine, some seasoning. A little more salt and pepper. Touch more of olive oil. Guess what? See some scallion. Let's throw that in there also. The green parts look for great garnish. That's what we're going to use in our caper oil. The white parts, we're going to brown. Put that nice pungent flavor. Now, the idea here is not to overcook our vegetables. The idea is to uh, wilt them down to cook our corn through. We did that in acid. We seasoned it with salt and pepper. Now, in the form of lemon, I'm going to add some acid and some wine. I put the equivalent of about two tablespoons of wine in there, which I'm going to let cook out. And now I'm actually going to put our salmon in the oven because we have about nine minutes for that to cook. And I know how long everything's gonna take. The rest of the sky in the green part, using all of it we can, we're gonna to add to the basis of our caper oil. Like I said, it's gonna be capers, a little bit of the caper juice. It's gonna be olive oil, fresh herbs, parsley. It's gonna be a simple sauce to go on top of our salmon. I have some capote capers here available in any supermarket. I'm just going to chop them a little fine. Then we're going to take this and put it right over our couscous. Our couscous has our sugar snot peas in there already. And we're going to let that cool a touch as we go back. So earlier we had our sweet potato. We browned our sweet potato on all sides. Got a little caramelization. All right. We cut our zucchini. We have some squash also. We're going to cut a little asparagus and a touch of garlic. We want everything the same size. We're going to cut this asparagus the same way we did our other vegetable. It's a nice fork sized pieces. So when you do get a fork, and you dig into all this great veg on a plate, everything is the same size and uniform. I'm going to add that right back into the pan that we had our veg in earlier. Let's get some garlic in there. We love garlic. I'm going to chop my garlic nice and fine. And I'm going to add it after I added what I sauteed because I don't want the garlic to burn. I want it as a flavoring aspect. I have my asparagus in there right now. <clears throat> I'm going to cook that, saute a little bit through. I'm going to season it. Salt and pepper just like before. I have my zucchini I cut. I'm working over about a medium to medium low heat right now, and I'm going to add some squash. As I add a new ingredient, I season also. I season in steps, so we're seasoning evenly, and the seasoning cooks in thoroughly. And 
and I want to get a little bit of caramelization on the vegetables. Lastly, I'm going to return my sweet potato to the pan. We have a great colorful vegetable. We have asparagus, it has a nice texture to it. We have zucchini and squash, great color. We have sweet potato, also very healthy, a little sweet content, and bringing everything together with a touch of starch. And if you're like me, you like your vegetables nice and crunchy so you know that they're there. So we're going to turn this off and let them continue to cook with residual heat. Now, I can focus on what we did earlier. We added our vegetables to our couscous salad. We had a lot of vinegar in there, a lot of acid from the wine we reduced out. We're going to add some olive oil. We had our snap peas that we blanched earlier and cut it in a nice dice. And we have, of course, salt and pepper because we season in steps, just like we did our vegetables, our corn. And we're simply going to mix that together and fold all of that in to the couscous. We're going to see the colors it takes on, the yellow and the green, and you know you're eating a little better, a little healthier. Last step, we cut up capers earlier. We had scallion, we're gonna add olive oil, and some fresh herbs, some parsley, and some dill. I'm gonna add a little bit of the juice from the capers. That's gonna add our salt content. We're simply going to mix that together. We just made the simplest sauce ever to go on top of our fish. We cut up capers, scallion. We took fresh herbs. We finely chopped parsley, a little bit of dill. We mixed it with olive oil. And without tasting, I know it's going to be great. So it's been about nine minutes or so. We can move to our salmon. Get a look at that. We have a nice golden brown top. You see all that great fat is still in, but it's leaking out a little bit. We have what is nothing short of the makings of a great dish. We're gonna put this aside to cool. We're gonna grab our plates. We're gonna plate this up. Everybody should understand the idea is if we were in a restaurant, the portions are already controlled. It's not about eating a lot. It's about putting a great flavor on the plate, making it look great and pairing together with every other element. So we didn't have to make a lot of food. We made really great food, really simple, made sure the flavors melded, and we did so in great time. So I'm going to take my couscous salad. Remember, it has the wine that reduced out, the lemon. We have fresh corn, pepper, scallion. And we're gonna put that right in the center of the plate. And we're not being stingy with such a great starch. We're gonna plate this a little bit of an angle, leaving our spot for our protein, which is the star of our dish. Remember, we had our sweet potato in here. We cut that in a nice small cube. We caramelized it first. Over a medium heat with olive oil. We seasoned it with salt and pepper. We took that out of the pan. We actually cooked our vegetable for our couscous. Then we returned to the pan asparagus, a little bit of garlic, zucchini and squash. And last but not least, our starter dish. We have a great pan seared salmon filet. Nice crust on it, skin on. I can actually smell the sear and how great it tastes. Finally, our caper oil, capers, scallion, fresh herbs, olive oil.
And we're just going to spoon this right over the fish. And let that sit there. And since we're at a restaurant in our house, let's make a great clean up our plates. Eat with your eyes first. And there you have it. Pan seared salmon, rose couscous salad, vegetables, asparagus, zucchini, squash, sweet potato, and a nice herb oil to bring it all together. Brought to you by me, Chef Mark McLean. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And I hope you can see and find me for some more great cooking tips and dishes. Do enjoy. RemarkableScene.com is how we do.